I just want to start this video off by saying that I apologize for the bad audio in here. We just got rid of the futon in the studio and the sound in here is like the echo is the worst. These are the Apple AirPods and this is the case that comes with them. Number one rule of owning the AirPods is to always put them back into the case. That way they never go missing. Now I have a big problem with this case. It's an extra piece of bulk that I don't really have anywhere to put. Now in my right pocket I always keep my smartphone and in my left pocket is my keys and my wallet. Yes, I am aware that this is actually one of the smaller cases for truly wireless earbuds in the market. I applaud Apple for making such a streamlined case for the AirPods because all the other truly wireless earbuds come in a much bigger container. But there is still a case that you have to carry around. So I have an idea. On Amazon, you can buy holsters for the AirPod case that allow you to clip it onto your belt. I really like this idea, so I decided to go for it with a bit of a twist. I recently got the Monoprice Select mini 3D printer. I don't remember exactly what the model name is called, but I've been itching to find projects to use it on and I thought this would be a great time to use it. I'm going to 3D print a holster for my AirPods case. The first step is to model the AirPods case. And to do that, I'm going to take some measurements using some calipers, and then I'm gonna take a few photos to model the curves. Okay, yeah, that's about 44 millimeters wide. 21 millimeters thick and I don't particularly care for how tall it is. The modeling process was definitely the hardest part of this project. I initially started by importing my pictures and then trying to build a model of the AirPods case that I can eventually cut out from the clip that I will be making. However, this proved quite difficult for me because the curves were a little different on every side. I'm sure somebody with more experience in Blender or any modeling software would have better luck than I did, but my experience was quite limited and I'm actually quite happy with the result that I got. After I finished modeling the case, I then proceeded to model the clip that I was gonna print. This was a lot easier than modeling the case and it all came down to design. I was able to make the case exactly the way that I wanted it to be and I also added my emblem to it. After that was done, I finally exported the model as a .stl file and then imported it into Cura, which I will be using to generate the G-code for my 3D printer. I had to play around with the settings and the model to get it all right. It was all trial and error at this point, but eventually, I finally got it to the point where I wanted it. It's been a few days since I initially started this project and made the initial design. And during this time, I've had the opportunity to test my own design and make little tweaks to it here and there. So here's how I got from point A to point B. This right here is revision one. And the issue with revision one, not only was the clip way too thin and fragile, but there was simply not enough room in between the clip and the actual case itself. So it couldn't fit in pretty much anywhere. Also, there was a printing error that made it not fully adhere to the shell. And so I took some super glue to it. That was a bad idea because then it just became stuck. And when I tried to pry it off, I broke the clip. But we got one thing right in revision one. The case fits the AirPod almost perfectly. There's a little bit of room where it'll spring back, but I'm sure that'll go away over time with more and more use and the tension will lessen. And I actually view this more as a feature because then the case remains tensioned for longer. Moving on to revision two, we have three models here of revision two, each had their own little issue. Looks like this is the first one. And the issue with this one was the clip was improperly printed and so it just broke right off. The next one was another print error, uh, but instead of breaking out the clip, it broke up here. This one I think has the same issue, it just didn't break yet. For revision two, I made the clip a little higher, that way the case is able to sit a little lower. Also, I made the clip a little thicker. Moving on to revision three, I added a little bit more room. Um, I think I made the clip even thicker, yeah? But that wasn't enough. Finally, revision four, which is the one I'm using right here. I believe that is two millimeters in between the clip and the shell. It's significantly thicker than uh, revision number one. A lot more durable this way, and 
I've been using it for a couple of days. Works pretty well. I made sure to leave a little bit of room right above the clip, that way it is still able to open. No problem there. And I've been very happy with the design. I actually gave another one of these to my friend. I thought about giving these away on the channel, but I don't know if people actually want them. Um, if anyone's interested, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll think about it. Printing one of these is generally pretty inexpensive. Um, one kilogram of filament, which costs about 25 Canadian dollars, is able to yield more than 75 units. Sorry, my bad, more than 70 units. So that's a pretty good cost to product ratio. Um, and I wouldn't be charging if I were to send these out. It's free advertising for me with my little emblem right there. So yeah, that's how I now carry my AirPods. Now this product, when you put it on a belt, it doesn't look that good. In my opinion, it just kind of sticks out a little bit. It's kind of like a fanny pack. But I think it's very practical if you have some place to strap it to on a bag. I just wish that Apple offered these AirPod cases in black because having this little white thing floating here, while it looks fine when I'm wearing a white shirt, when I'm wearing something darker, it looks a little off. Again, if you don't want to go through all of this work, you can always buy one through Amazon. I will have links to the product in the description below if you're interested in buying one. But the main purpose of this video was so that I could experiment with my 3D printer. And I would say that this project is very much a success. I look forward to doing more printing projects in the future. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.